Hey guys, Steve here. I uh, just want to throw up a quick video for you. Uh, went out fishing today, didn't catch anything, so I'm going to do a didn't catch anything today, so I'm going to do a video about something else. Uh, this one's going to be about cast nets. Uh, you'll see a lot of my videos, I kind of target uh, using uh, live bait quite often. Uh, it's just a very important aspect for fishing down here. So I kind of want to go over that little bit of a technique on what I use. Um, uh, the type of uh, nets that I use and where and why. Um, I'm not going to go over the technique that I throw the net with. Um, I think there's thousands of videos on YouTube and it kind of really just depends on what make you feel comfortable with. Um, however, what I will do is I'll put um, links to uh, three videos that kind of I found were very helpful for the three different te techniques that I use. Um, the first one is just basically the everyday throwing a five foot net. Um, if you look on the little packaging that if you buy a, a cast net new, if you look on the packaging, it'll have that little guy showing you the instructions. Or if you go to most of the um, manufacturer websites, they'll have a little quickie video about how to throw these nets. That's basically how I throw it. Um, so it's just a, that first one will be just, I, I found the guy to be a, a, a very good tutorial video that he produced. So uh, the second one will be. Um, the triple load method or the third load method uh, for throwing a larger net. So I have like a seven foot net and then when I, I kind of utilize it for uh, a little bit larger, all the way up to the 12 foot net that I throw, um, I'll use that triple load. It's just a, um, I had a hard time learning how to throw cast net, cast nets. So for the bigger ones, that one I think is the most um, not so technically necessary to be so perfect about it on your technique. If, it's more of if you load it correctly and you get that loading part right, then you just throw it out and then it automatically opens for you. So it takes my part out of it and it seems to work the best. So that's why I do that. And then the third video will be, um, it's pretty much the, the triple load method, but when you're sitting on your kayak, how to throw it in a sitting position the best way. And I have to utilize that both on my small net, the five footer and the seven footer in order because when you're sitting down, you don't have a lot of uh, a space to be able to grab it. So you have to make a little bit of a tighter load in order to throw it out there. So that triple load works pretty good with that. So there's a third video and I'll show you how to use that. Um, otherwise, I'm going through and this is just kind of the, what I found that works good for me down here. Um, the number one net I use is a, a five foot net. Okay, it uses a 3 8 mesh. Now the mesh part of it is, is basically the whole size of the actual net. And this one's rated at 3 8 They go down to 3 16 for like glass minnows, up to inch and a half, two inches I guess for a larger mullet and other types of baits that commercial guys might catch. But uh, 3 8 is important in, in, in multiple regards. One, it's the, the economies of scale. Um, 3 8 is kind of like the most widely used net size by all the manufacturers. Therefore, I think uh, the costs for producing them are a lot cheaper. So uh, a 5 foot 3 8 net I bought for a little over $20, $22 or whatnot. A similar net in a quarter 3 8 mesh is going to run you $60 to $80. Okay, it's just that scale. There's really not much difference in how they build them, but I think they can mass produce a ton of these solid ton where the other ones will be more specialty so they have to increase the price to kind of make up for that. Okay. The second part of it is the size of the mesh covers pretty much the main majority of the baits that I use to catch down here in a cast net. Um, number one and two are my primary which are pin, um, not pinfish, but uh, pilchards. And you'll see me catching those all the time. That's, that's uh, fish candy down here, probably the most important bait down in the Keys. And secondarily, a close second would be the mullet. And I use the mullet primarily bait for tarpon fishing, and it's my go-to bait. And uh, also they're good for cut bait, as well as for sharks and um, barracudas because they're a top water uh, swimmer. So they have a lot of top water activity for with using mullet. So that kind of is the reason why the, the 3 8 I've got them both in 3 8 size. Um, now in regards to the length, Okay, um, five eighths, I mean a five footer is for me the perfect size for throwing from a kayak down here. Um, the number one being is that it is manageable. Okay, uh, not super huge, I don't have to do like those guys 
the triple load method and very quick arranging and so forth. To straighten it out, I can just grab one lead, open it up, and everything's cleared. The braille lines are cleared, the lead, lead, weight, lead weights are cleared. It's all good to go. Okay, that's all it is, just one hand. And what that does is the second thing is, is that makes it um, quick to throw. Okay, I can throw it out there, I happen to miss. Okay, um, I still see some swimming around. If I'm throwing the big nets, I'm having to sort those out, straighten the lines, straighten the braille, try to load it up, and then they're gone. This one, I just bring it back, grab my leads, loop it around, and I'm throwing it again. It's just that easy, so it's very fast. Uh, third reason why is very accurate. Okay, I could throw this net in anywhere I want to, okay, with precision. And that's very important. I'm not throwing a, a 12 foot or 24 foot diameter encompassing the whole. Uh, 180 degrees in front of me, okay, but I can throw it where I need to and that's good enough for what I'm using it for. Um, and then the last three positive reason is that uh, I can throw distance, okay. With this net, I can throw it out to the end of the rope, 25, 30 foot with accuracy. So as baits get uh, more skittish, okay, and I start seeing them, they start taking off, I can still whip this thing out there, throw it a distance and still catch them. Okay, so that makes it a really good net. And on the bonus side of it is, it's not necessary to catch tons of bait, okay? Uh, when you're not fishing from a boat that has a huge, massive live well, I'm not needing 500 to 1,000 pilchers like these commercial boats or um, the, the tourist charter boats because they're going to use go out there and throw 15 to 20 of them at a time out just to chum up fish, okay? I just want to catch 15 or 20, and that's my whole day of fishing right there. So I'm going to use them one at a time. And you'll see is that um, when I want good quality baits, I'll throw the smaller net because I won't get a whole crap load of them. I'll get a couple dozen. I can get them released really quickly, put them in the bait bucket, and I'm done and ready and out there. Uh, especially now during the cooler season where um, the baits are very heavy and you get big schools of them. I throw this big net, I end up getting uh, two to three gallons of filters in one throw. And it's just unnecessary and it kind of wastes time. It takes forever to clean them out and so forth. But why do I have that seven foot net? Uh, there's multiple reasons. Um, the primary reason was I bought this for was at during the end of season of the bait season. Um, around that April, May, June time when the, the temperatures start rising and the water temperature starts rising, the baits start taking off from the flats. Um, the pilchers will start going out to the reef and spending their time out there and then the, uh, the mullet will start migrating up north and the problem with that is that is also the same time that the tarpon are coming down and with the mullet being my primary bait um, I need to make sure that I'm catching those when I can because I only need a couple of them, two or three and I'm good for the day but um, what happens though is that the schools become a lot smaller and they become a lot farther in between finding them and there's days where I can go and I get might get two throws at them, and if I don't get them in those two throws, then I'm done for the day. I have no bait, and I'm not going to catch anything. So I kind of ended up going with a, a, a larger net, a seven-footer. Now, the reason why for seven-foot in particular, where is, yeah, I can have access to a nine-foot or a 12-foot, is that in a kayak, it's different than a boat. You don't have that ability to, to spread the net out. And... If you watch any of the uh, professional cast netting people, the guides and stuff that do the videos about how to throw a cast net, there's one common thread on that part. Even though there's thousands of different videos of different techniques on how to throw a cast net, there's one thread that kind of goes to all of them, and that is that you have to have, your braille lines have to be straight, okay? If they're wound up or twisted, okay, you're going to throw a banana which is a closed net, okay, that's important. The other part of it is, is that if your leads, and the lead line is not straightened and they're not caught up and rolled up inside the braille lines or overlapping, okay, regardless of the technique that you use, you're going to throw that one out again, okay. You have to have a straight braille lines and you have to have it so that the, the lead lines are, are untangled, okay. So well, the way I was, did it when I was deciding on what size larger net to get was, is that I wanted to be able to sort this net out inside my kayak. 
So as I'm standing, okay, I can raise my arms with the net and then I can get the rail lines straight. That's like 50% of it. And the other part of it is, is that I want to be able to do the same thing with the, the, the uh, lead line, just be able to sort it out. And third is once you catch the bait, okay, when you have a super huge net, okay, getting the baits out can be a hassle and a half, trying to get them shook down to the bottom, trying to find the bottom, trying to get the bottom over your bucket and so forth, it becomes a mess. So just that much more important that I had a manageable, manageable net. And that's why I kind of got the seven foot for me. If you're a six foot 10 basketball player and you can stand up in your kayak and you've got a, a nine inch reach, nine foot reach, then a nine foot would be fine. I'd recommend that. But that really is the reason why I ended up getting the, the seven foot there. Okay. So in general, that's kind of uh, the, the main reasons of uh, which cast nets to use and why are the ones I use at least. Now, um, the importance of, of live bait is down here in the Keys. I mean, my, the proof is in if you watch, even if you watch the, the TV shows about fishing in the Keys, um, you'll see those, they're generally professional guides. And I'd say with the exception of the fly fishing guys, pretty much all of them will have some aspect of them either going out and, and catching bait inshore before they leave or chumming some up on the reefs and ballyhoos and catching those out there or in some regards there will be live bait involved with the TV shows of going out and catching fish. Same thing if you've ever been on a charter. Most of the time they'll either have their um, big uh, bait tanks already set up with the bait um, that they just keep constantly filling and using or they'll take the time out in the morning, spend an hour and go catch baits before they make that run. Uh, but it's just such an important aspect that um, if you really kind of want to get involved with the, the, the keys fishing, it's just the integral part that it's, it's good to, it's a real good part to know. Okay? Now, do you have to have that? No, you can catch most of the baits with sabikis. Um, you'll see that I use my hook and line to catch the, uh, the ballyhoo grunts, Pinfish, okay, so it's it's easily acceptable, and you can even catch pilchards with the sabiki reeks. So it's not totally that necessary. But I think for the guy that's coming, the person that's coming down and going to fish for the weekend one or two times, and has never thrown a cast net before, would I recommend it? Absolutely not. I tell him, don't even waste your time. If you want to do live bait, go buy some live bait and save your your money for your uh, to get on the water and actually fishing, or catch the pinfish or catch the bayou with a hook and line, okay? Now, on the flip side, if you're going to be staying down here for a week or a couple weeks on vacation and your primary reason for being down here is fishing and you really want to know about uh, Keys fishing, then yeah, I would say spend 25 bucks. I mean, it's really not that bad. One throw, a bucket of pilchards is, I mean, 50 bucks up in Miami during off season, okay? So, one throw, it gets you some live bait. It's a, it's a technique that you'll learn that you can utilize in other places, and it's, it's very worthwhile, like I said. And third is that if you're gonna be down here for a while, I mean, it's, it's just a must. I mean, you just really, really just, if you want to improve the fish catching that you're doing, um, the types of fish that you're catching, the size of fish that you're catching, the live bait aspect of it is just so important to really learn. So that, um, that's my cast net spiel. Um, got any questions, throw them down there and I'll see if I can answer them. But keep watching the videos and you'll see me using the cast net more often. Um, I'll try to film some more of me actually setting it up and the actual throws. I've got a couple that show those, but I'll do a few more with it. But uh, otherwise, see you later.